Welcome to the director's cut of Christian Nutrition, the show where we review every single episode of VeggieTales chronologically. And by we, I really mean just me. Minnesota Cuke and the Search for Samson's Hairbrush actually released in June of 2005. And is that a coincidence? Because Raiders of the Lost Ark, which this is parodying, came out in June of 1981, albeit that is a 24 year difference, but they're both in June. Not sure if that was an accident or not. I'm actually excited for this episode. I am a huge Indiana Jones fan, despite what all these posters might imply differently. Indiana Jones is my second favorite movie series after Back to the Future. Let's review Minnesota Cuke and The Search for Sam's Hairbrush. We got a letter from Caleb Whittier in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Bob? Yeah? How come you always get the letter? Good question. How in 12 years has Larry not received a letter and been the one to read it? What if somebody wrote a letter to me? Well, I guess if you got a letter, you could read it. But this letter says, D Great! Dear Larry! Oh, wait a minute, Larry. I don't mean to be rude, but Caleb here has a problem. And I was all prepared to do a story to have- Well, little Eli has a question, too. Are these questions related to each other, or...? There's a bully in his school, and- A bully? Yeah, you know, a kid that's real mean to all the other kids. I, I know what a bully is, Larry. Then why'd you ask? Good point, Larry. Why did you ask, Bob? Caleb wrote about the same thing. Wow, that's one busy bully. Well, it's not the same bully. How do you know? Yeah, how do you know, Bob? This bully could be a world traveler. What, do you read minds? Do you know this isn't the same bully? Well, Larry, it's just highly improbable, statistically speaking, that one bully is bothering two kids 500 miles apart. Oh, uh, no need to get up in arms, Bob. Larry's just stating that's possible that this is the same bully and that you shouldn't rule that out. Bob? Instead of talking about this, wouldn't it be a better idea to answer the question? Point, set, match. Larry wins. Give him the win for actually using logic in this episode. Junior gets bullied here? Now, don't be wrong, in the past this would have been like a godsend, like a Christmas gift. However, I'm kind of over not liking Junior. He's gotten a lot better in time. So, hopefully Junior doesn't get bullied? For this is Sherwood, and I'm Robin Hood, with my bow and my trusty arrow. Back-to-back -back episodes where characters have either looked or been Robin Hood. Big Idea really wants to get Robin Hood out of the systems. They need to get Robin Hood out of their systems. Or maybe they're just obsessed with the idea of their VeggieTales and tights. Veggies and tights. We're men. We're men in tights. We roam around the forest looking for bites. <laughs> yeah, get him, bully Junior till he cries. Wow, I am sending a terrible message right now. <laughs> Wait, it was all just a dream, or it was just Junior's imagination? From now on, no one is allowed to play here unless I say so. You got it? Sure, I've got it. And that goes for all of you. This entire conundrum, I realized, could have been solved by simply having an adult show up and tell this kid to buzz off, that this is a public playground. But of course that doesn't happen. That would make this way too easy. If I catch any one of you even stepping foot in here, you'll get what Junior here got. And worse, get it? So get out of here! Someone knock this guy's lights out for me. I don't even like him. And I don't care if Junior gets bullied. That says how much I don't like him. Before I pound on all of his. Have you ever been pounded? A cousin of mine was. He's soup now. <laughs> um, is is that supposed to be dirty? I'm just I'm just gonna give it a pass. Want me to tell your mom or dad? No, I'm fine. There's nothing to tell. Typical males, they just don't know how to get in touch with their feelings like us females. Now I know what you're thinking, aren't you a man? No, I identify as a female, thank you very much. Despite how God may have created me. You could tell Gordon he doesn't own the playground. That's what I'd tell him if I were bigger. Junior, you already know that God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla or the monsters on TV. Where's Junior? Without my star player, we haven't got a prayer. This is clearly a dream sequence. Junior is the worst athlete in this entire show. I would draft him dead last, especially for a sport like football.
You know, that's only six, maybe seven points if they get the extra point. They were down 200 to zero with two minutes remaining. It is literally impossible for him to score 28 more touchdowns to win this game. But of course, Junior then implausibly scores 204 points, which is just a bit over 29 touchdowns in a matter of only two minutes. There are so many flaws here, but I don't have the time to explain them all. Junior snaps out of his dream to see Laura calling out for him. All the ladies must love Junior. That's now two different women who have come to talk to him and care about him, probably because Junior has a tendency to... scare me. He doesn't? What's the worst he can do? Sit on me? He already did that and I barely felt it. Good point, Junior. You sound a lot like me when I give advice. Wait, are Junior and I becoming more alike? No, no, please. This can't be happening. This can't be true. Nah, IDC, LOL. Let's move on. I'd go back today if you guys wanted to. He's probably gone by now anyway. Junior, Junior, chill. You're too young to be doing stupid things to impress the ladies yet. That's like another like 10 years away for you. I'm toast. You are toast. Not yet, I'm not. But you just said you were toast. You are more bread cut on the diagonal that is subsequently spread with butter or jam. We'll see about that. Since this is Junior's dream, is this actually Junior arguing with himself? I would like to know. So, somebody tell me. I would love to know. Is Junior arguing with himself? Does he need to see a psychiatrist? A variety of toast selections are wheat, white, sourdough. I must admit, this spaceship is pretty funny, but then that would be me admitting that Junior's pretty funny since this is his dream and the spaceship is actually him talking to himself. Okay, okay. This one time Junior's funny, but don't get cocky, kid. Welcome to the planet Sandboxian. Population? One big bully. Leave now, or you're toast. You know, you guys are really making me hungry with all this toast talk. Out of the frying pan and into the toaster. Yes, we get it. You are toast. I understand. The joke is getting stale now. Ah, bread pun. <laughs> Is Junior actually winning a fight? Is the world coming to its cold and bitter end? Good work, you killed him. How do you feel now? Do you feel like a big man? Cause you're now a scoundrel and a traitor. Junior's dad then gives Junior some good advice on standing up to the bully. You know what? It has been a while since Junior and his dad have had a meaningful conversation in a VeggieTales episode. I actually want to say the last time this happened was Fit for Matter Space, though I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments. Anyways, Junior's dad teaches Junior an important lesson which gives Junior some confidence to face the bully in real life. Why, if it isn't Junior and his peewee friends. <laughs> What did you do? Come back for a second helping of pounding? Can we not use any other word? I f like, is beating too vulgar of a word? Is pounding really the only word that's an option for this situation? Gordon, no one owns this playground. It's big enough for all of us to share. You know what I think? I think I'm going to enjoy beating the living daylights out of you every day. In earlier episodes, as I said before, I would have looked forward to this, but now I'm rooting for Junior. I'm his number not number one fan, that's for sure. Then you'll have to beat me up too. And me. And me. And me too! Two girls and a couple of peas plus Junior is not that intimidating. I, he should be able to beat them all up easily. Ah, this is lame. I don't even like this lousy old playground. I, I'm going home to play video games. Well, that was anticlimactic. Lame! What next? And now it's time for Silly Songs with Letty, the part of the show where Letty comes out and sings a silly song. The real question is, will this be a classic or will this be a clunker, since most of the recent Silly Songs have all been forgettable clunkers. So I phoned in a pizza for delivery, but I had a feeling that something wasn't right because I waited for hours and no pizza. Pizza Angel, please come to me. It's a classic. I need more. Pizza Angel. Did it get lost? Did they just forget? Should I have ordered on the internet? Pizza Angel, I'm on my knees. And don't forget to add my favorite anchovies. 
this song will go down as a classic. Thank the Lord, it's been so long it feels like since the last one. Though the song does remind me a bit of the other song from Back to the Future. I'll never forget you, Pizza Angel. I'm getting a glare. Use your cap to shield the screen. Martin, it's not a cap. It's called a fedora. Fedoras are beyond cool. Only those of us with higher education wear them. <laughs> like that. Look over by the rock to your left. You see anything? I'm on it. I got it, Marty. No worries. You spoke too soon. Have you never seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, Larry? I told you, Minnesota, it's it's never that easy. Minnesota escapes the snowman, but Mr. Lunt steals the golden carrot, basically parodying Rares of the Lost Ark beat for beat. Mr. Lunt has been stealing from Minnesota since he was a young cucumber. A scallion comes by in need of help since the Canadians are trying to take both sides of Niagara Falls. Typical Canadians, this is why we need to build a wall on the Canadian border. even a real country anyway. And the legendary hairbrush of Samson. You're kidding, the Samson? What? Who's Samson? Who's Samson? Come on, Larry. How long have you been a part of Veggie Tales now? Like 10 years, 12 years? You think you would have heard of Samson by now. Samson was none other than the strong man in the Bible. God used him to fight against the Philistines who were bullying the Israelites. A strong man that fought bullies, huh? That is until a seductress came along and cut Samson's hair, really killing him of his strength. Apparently the Canadians believe that the hairbrush was the real source of Samson's power. Minnesota thinks that if he gets the hairbrush, then he'll be able to stop Mr. Lunt from taking his discoveries from him in the future. I'm going out for ice cream. Why did Minnesota stop by the headquarters of Big Idea before heading overseas? I, Franklin, Tennessee does not have an international airport. I know, I live in Tennessee and I checked. Hello, Julia. Minnesota Cuke. I always knew that someday you'd come walking through my door. It's been a long time. Hello, Marion. Indiana Jones. <sighs> always knew someday you'd come walking back through my door. A chocolate Malta. Malt. Right. Chocolate. No, it's malt, not Malta. What? Malt is a dessert. Malta is an island. Wow, I actually just learned something in a VeggieTales episode. Am I not an adult? I feel like I should have already known that. I'm looking for clues, Jules. You're not the clueless type. I'm on the trail of a hairbrush. Same song, second verse. Thank you for acknowledging that, VeggieTales. It would have bugged me to no end if you had not acknowledged that. Samson. What kind of face is that? Is that her kindness look? Sweet Pea gives Cuke an address that should help him out. Mr. Lunt gets this address as well, but he is a fiend about it. He actually melts all of Sweet Pea's ice cream. <gasps> she can't unmelt that with her kindness. So Samson had to make certain promises to God. Promises? Yeah, he couldn't touch dead things, eat grapes, or cut his hair. That's weird. Yes. Yes, it is, Larry. <laughs> That was so stupid, but in the best way possible, like Wayne's World. Where are you going? England! I can't believe Paramount is spending the money to fly us to England. I would have thought they would just use two doubles. So you're positive that guy was Canadian? I can't be sure. He didn't look Canadian. Funny. 
She doesn't look droish. The Spanish barbers tell Minnesota how to get to the hairbrush by giving him a map. Mr. Lunt, of course, comes right along and steals this map and all chaos ensues. The Bible says we should love our enemies. Love? Love our enemy? I'm gonna get that brush first, and I'm gonna use its power to defeat all the bullies in the world. I'm gonna teach them a lesson they'll never forget. No debate on my end, Minnesota. Go ahead and teach those bullies a lesson. This reminds me a lot of the rumor weed episode. You should check that out if you haven't already, where Larry Boy goes underground and then fights the rumor weed and doesn't actually end up defeating rumor weed in the end. It was just a huge, massive disappointment like Vivint from outer space. I'm really hoping that Larry Boy in his next outing actually defeats the bad guy on his own. If he doesn't, it's I'm going to have to change the shirt and I don't want to do that, but I'm probably going to have to. So, sorry, I got off track there, guys. Let's, sorry, Minnesota Q can search for Sam's hairbrush. This better be an epic adventure action sequence, because if it isn't, I'm going to be disappointed. Who creates areas like this with like a ring of ground in a cave, but like who dug out all the empty area and then put a bridge and then there's like just one, like who makes these areas? Who hires them to make them? I don't know. So many questions and no answers. <laughs> Worms. Why'd it have to be worms? Snakes. Why'd it have to be snakes? Samson's hairbrush. Congratulations, Mr. Cube. I think Mr. Lunt may be a professional troll in this episode. What's wrong? You have no hair. What? You have no power because you have no hair. Yeah, dude, you've known this for 10 years now. Why do you need a hairbrush you don't have? I'll give it to you, or the Canadians, or anybody. It's mine. Oh, but I think you will. Cute. No, not Sweet Pea. She is so uh, kind. She's just so kind. Trade. <laughs> that was a terrible trade. What are you thinking? doesn't have any power. But the Bible said that Samson's hair was his- The Bible said that God gave Samson his power, not his hair or his hairbrush. So this whole episode was a waste of time and a wash then? Samson lost his strength because he didn't keep his promise to God. And the best part is that God gives us strength too. He gives us an even greater power than Samson's, the power to love our enemies. I think a lot of us would rather have super strength, except for the Hulk, he is constantly trying to lose his powers. <laughs> Who, what, when, where, why, how did they even do that? Hold it right there, Rattan. What? How did they? Yeah! We may never know, Mr. Lunt. We may never know. The Canadian Mounties show up to stop Mr. Lunt. Why? How are they connected to the hairbrush? Mr. Lunt and the Scallion lied and said the Canadians were after it, but it was just that. A lie. The Canadians were never involved. Anyways, Minnesota explains that the hairbrush holds no power except to make a comb over. Larry tells the Mounties to let Mr. Lunt free since he has done nothing wrong. Mr. Lunt is baffled and says he has never experienced kindness before. He must have not ever actually looked up at Sweet Pea. He would have experienced kindness and a whole lot of it. Mr. Lunt apologizes and Sweet Pea does some more flirting with Minnesota when suddenly... Think you can find Noah's umbrella? Where's my cap? It's called a fedora. I'm on my way. Why did Noah need an umbrella? Anyways, we won't find out until 2009, and hopefully this sequel will be more like Last Crusade and less like Temple of Doom. Well, we're over here by QWERTY to talk about what we learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. You know, some episodes Bob likes the song and then some episodes he doesn't. Just, just make up your mind already. I'm getting confused, Bob. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Matthew 5:44. God made you special and he loves you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye.
That was Minnesota Cuke and the Search for Samson's Hairbrush. Overall, it was a good episode. Nothing was bad and or made me want to skip ahead or go, Ugh, do I really have to watch this? We had the first part with Junior getting bullied, which was good. We had Pete's Angel, which was a classic and the best part of the episode. And then the Minnesota Cuke uh, parody of Indiana Jones was pretty well done. Stay tuned as next time we review Sherlock Holmes and the Golden Ruler. Obviously, this looks like it's going to be a Sherlock Holmes parody. Technically, I should be reviewing Lord of the Beans next. However, I already did it on accident before Duke and the Great Pie War and this episode, Minnesota Cuke and the Search for Sam's Hairbrush. If you didn't see Lord of the Beans or you want, really want to watch this in a chronological order, check it out here. It's good. I promise. We even use clips from Lord of the Rings. Remember, God made you special and he loves you very much. Bye.